We can define the centre of buoyancy in two ways. Firstly, and perhaps easiest, is to say that we assume all the forces of buoyancy to act through this point. We know that, of course, buoyant force is acting on all of the surface of the underwater hull, but it, it's concentrated at that point. Secondly, we can define it as follows. It is the geometric centre of the underwater volume of your hull. From the waterline downwards, doesn't matter which way you look at it, whether it's transversely or longitudinally here, it represents the centre of the underwater volume of your hull. Now this is all very well when you're sitting still in the pen, when the vessel is uh, quite static, but let's take her out to sea and start pitching and rolling and carrying on. Then it can be seen that B is going to get pretty busy. It has to, at any instant in time, be located in the centre of that volume, and of course that volume is constantly changing. If the vessel goes a little bit bow down in the water, the underwater volume, the bulk of the volume, shifts forward, so B must shift forward with it. As the vessel rolls to port here, as you viewed from aft, we can see that there's going to be more underwater volume on the port side, so B will move out. It's pretty busy. So from that you can probably see that the centre of buoyancy is not something we have any control over really. Um, of course, if we sink the vessel down lower, we change the underwater volume and B will consequently move. Uh, we realise that, but ultimately, <clears throat> once we're out there rolling around, it's out of our control. G, however, is a little bit different. G is something that we do have control over. Now, when the ship is manufactured, she comes off the stocks. Remember light ship condition? No variables on board at all. It will have a centre of gravity the point through which we assume all the forces of gravity to act. Now, it's a hollow box, a vessel, and the centre of gravity doesn't necessarily have to be within the mass itself. It can be somewhere in the middle of that hollow void in that volume. So we'll represent it in this diagram as being here, on the centre line, in light ship condition. Now, I said that we have control over the centre of gravity, and there's three very fundamental rules that we use to determine that. The first one, or laws of the centre of gravity if you like, that's the way I think of it, is that the centre of gravity will move towards a weight added. That's law number one. So let's add that weight. And we can see that the centre of gravity will move proportionately towards that weight. Law number two, the centre of gravity moves away from a weight discharged. So Let's get rid of it. And the centre of gravity will move proportionately back to where it was in the first place. Law number three, probably the most uh, misunderstood one in early stages of learning this, is that the centre of gravity, I'll just put G out here again as though it's moved towards that weight. Centre of gravity will move parallel to a weight shifted. So if we move this weight from one side of the ship to the other, I'll just put a little G in here to actually indicate that this weight has a centre of gravity as well. G will move parallel and a proportionate distance, G1, G2, and a proportionate distance in the same direction as the weight that you just shifted. Let's take this weight for whatever reason and stow it down in the hold here. Move it down there. G. G will move proportionately in the same direction, the G of your ship. And now, let's arrive at our destination, discharge the weight, out she goes, and G of your ship will move away from the discharged weight back to its original starting point. So you can see that we're using those three laws you do have a considerable amount of control over the centre of gravity. 